Hello there and welcome back. Today I want to talk about my just finished Eurorack system for live performances. A lot of you ask me to go through it and uh, now that I finally have all the modules that I need, I want to give you an idea of uh, what was behind uh, the idea behind it. So I'm the idea mostly was just having one case with everything needed and I just added the SP404 uh, to trigger sample effects and maybe full tracks if I need to reset things and I added also another surface of control, the zero control from Mac Noise. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So I want to uh, tell you how the uh, audio flows inside it, how am I going to perform it, but before, of course, few ways you can support the page, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, buy from the affiliate link down below. It's going to be the same exact amount of money for you and I get a tiny percentage and become a Patreon. In Patreon, I have tons of exclusive content. I always reply to your question and, you know, you're, you're not going to regret. All right, let's, let's see what happened here. So first, the system is based uh, revolving around two voices rings and atlantis plus of course the sample trigger by the sp which i will just prepare and trigger uh, the idea here is have each bank a different track or piece so it's going to be simple for me to know what's happening uh, the sp come into the euro accord using the uh, bored brain that basically uh, push the level to be uh, good for this. And what's happened? Atlantis, Ring and him goes inside the Quadrat. Quadrat is going to be my mixer. I'm using it in unipolar, so basically each one of these is a channel. And then the unified, uh, the summed signal, mono, I, care, I don't care to have stereo at this point, all mono, goes inside the magneto. From Magneto, it starts the stereo chain. It's going to be Magneto, then Starlab. Just got this one, and it's fantastic. Then from Starlab, we go into the Mojave. That adds some crunchy, beautiful little texture. Data Bender, that f f it has been my end of chain since ages by now. And then out into the sound card. The uh, sequencer in this case is Metropolis. So I could have used an external sequencer, it could have been the Oxy, of course, but the idea behind this system is like having sample, like uh, effects, drones, whatever, and then everything else is gonna be improvised. So Metropolis, Metropolis give me two track, which of course is gonna be the Atlantis and the ring, uh, and the more I'm using it, the more allows you to have very interesting way of changing what happened, happening both with your hands and CV. I don't have, of course, a lot of CV modulation because I didn't have enough space more, but what am I using? The planner, which can record all of my movement and send out through X and Y and uh, A, B, C and D the CV value. I have the Pamela Pro Workout that also is my clock. I have the first four row going into all the system and then the second four row are like LFO, uh, Euclidean um, sequences, whatever. Then I have the Oct that do the LFO duties and that's it. Maybe I might exchange a GX from the Metropolis, which is cool, but I don't really need it having the Pamela Pro workout with the new uh, Oct Expander, which seems really great. I added the zero control to have another layer of CV modulation because with this I can create scene. For example, I can decide that this scene here, it could have zero wet for all Magneto Star Lab, so I just have to put, plug this into the wet signal, and now I can decide full wet, zero wet. Of course, having cable like the MyVolts that uh, show me, give me a visual cue of what's happening, for example, if it's blue, means that there's a positive 
uh, value. If it's red, it would be negative value. And if it's turned off, means that there's nothing happening. It's great. This happened also at the level of clocking. As you see, I can have a visual cue with all the white cable. The white cable are the clocking cable here. So I can see what happened all over the system. It's pretty useful. Okay, let's go back to the intro. I show you what I was doing because that's gonna be the way I perform. So I have channel three here. That is the SP44. When I want to trigger a sample that I prepare, for example, I have this one. If I want to keep it, I would put it in loop. And then just press hold. So this will go no matter what. I kept the volume here at the maximum level because it's easier for me to reach out to this. Here I can add effects, blah, blah, blah. So there's, you can just perform with this guy only and be happy forever. But so here, for example, for this first part, I had this, this other sample and a bass. So from now I can bring in the other instrument. I have rings on channel two. Usually rings as this uh, percussive or string instrument. But let's focus more on the Atlantis so I can show you what happened on the chain. So one problem that you might say is like, okay, but now every instrument will go through the effects. Yes, that's a decision that I had. I could have used a mixer with send and return. I have the Praga, but that complicates things so much. And I'm really fine in having everything uh, getting mangled by all of these beautiful four effects. So first in the chain is the magneto. Magneto is gorgeous. I can play with my hand. I can make it very crunchy if I use the tape simulation, bring interesting harmonics with the distortion. So this is, it is a performing instrument. Then Star Lab, just got it. It's amazing. These two together, it's enough to play for months. So it would be reductive to call Star Lab a, a reverb. It does so many things. Right now I'm, I have this uh, diffuse reverb. I can play with the LFO. I can bring on the glimmer and the shimmer. Shimmer can be quantized to scale uh, and fourth octave is beautiful. I can also play it only wet and I can also sequence the pitch. And then we go into the Mojave. Mojave is new too. Mojave is triggered by the running order, so I can create a sequence just uh, doing like this. And now I have a new sequence which triggered the Mojave. I'm using the uh, gold mode here, chisel. So basically it trigger granules only when uh, a trigger come out of running order. And I like to use it in and out with my hand. Last step, my favorite effects, data bender, which is controlled the wet and dry by the planner. All of this change in the tune is made just by the bend. And with this I can do glitch stuff and have fun. Bring, let's bring everything in.
And this is the sense of this uh, full system. Get to have this sequence going on. And then with Metropolis, which is super easy to use, I can interact with my sequence very easily. For example, right now I have a seven step sequence, but the running order of it, you press order and it's odd even, means that the first time it plays the odd, one, three, five, seven, and then two, four, six. Also, I have an accumulator on seven. No, actually don't, let's see. Set it, accumulator, no. Let's put, uh, for example, I like to put accumulator. And now it will change every time. So it creates a continuous uh, evolving. What you can do also, you can control everything through CV. So for example, I could send my zero control and start a sequence clocked. Actually, let's clock it with this. So for example, now I can just play. And I can now control all the Metropolis sequence in weird way. I like to have this here color coded with orange because I know that these are all the modulation that I can remove and change all around the system. This system allows me to get these unpredictable things that I love. Bring the bass, and here I can create a lot of stuff. Beautiful. I can change the order, for example, and see what happens. Jump by two. It's the same, of course. Jump by four. I can start make longer pulser count. Being the sub. So, the limit here, it's your imagination and <laughs> the bravery you have on a live performance to just let go of any fear and interact with your system, which is what I really care about. That's about it. Few advice. If you build something aimed to performance, there's two things that I learned. First, keep it simple. One chain, everything go through it, embrace it. Make worlds so everything is gonna get wet, uh, any, anything is gonna get mangled by this effect. It's gonna be more interesting rather than having a mixer and do send return. Not more interesting, but more easy because there's less things you have to think about. Second, having something that is self-contained and also I can power the SP through here, USB, this one too, it's insanely convenient. Uh, you go, you turn it on, ready to go. Amazing. Other thing, color code your cable. Right now I have all the modulation in uh, orange and I'm using the MyVolt because give me visual cue. It's super, super useful. I have all the audio flow with black cable, except here, because I didn't have it enough, I'm gonna buy more. So it's gonna be black and black, so I know the black cable is my audio, and I won't touch them, because otherwise something is not gonna end well. And then the white cable is my clock and my sequences. So with that, everything is uh, super simple. 
Then choose module that you enjoy playing. I talked about that before, Planner. It's my favorite, I love it. And I can record stuff like that, play it, and I have already something else. So if you don't have a lot of modulation, modulate with your hand. Something like the Planner is perfect for them. See, you just embrace it. Now, what can I have more? I could use a pedal at the end. Maybe I will use the Golden Master so I can have all the sound compacted, compressed, and limited to have a beautiful sound out uh, to the PA. Anyway, I will do the live show the 30th of November here at Fitzroy for the Berlin Modular Society. I will let you know about that. And I will do another video uh, close to that date to show you where I am at with the full performance. Okay, plus I will release a video about Starlab and Magneto by themselves because those two things are insanely beautiful. And then I want to talk about Metropolis more in depth because even that this guy, it's super, super powerful. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting and I'll see you next week.